Hey guys. Hi. Welcome to Supernatural Love. Um, we are back on the live show. Yes. Uh, let us know if you can hear us. Yes, give us some thumbs up. Let us know if our voices are coming out clear. We are so, so excited to uh, come on here and just do an amazing show. It's going to be so, so good. We're sorry we're just a tad bit late. Um, we're just uh, just going to have a good time uh, enjoying the good company we've got for you tonight. All right. Yeah, so we should be live here on <laughs> um, multiple different yeah. platforms. So we are live on Supernatural Love Facebook, Hi. Supernatural Love YouTube, Hi. and we're live on my personal and public figure page. So go ahead and share the broadcast, you guys. Yes. Um, there's going to be some incredible value uh, for you tonight, specifically in the the realm of connection and relationships right babe yes absolutely this this is revolutionized uh if i could say that uh the way that we process in our marriage it's just been so helpful and just in a short amount of time too it's just already been so helpful i'm so excited for the more for the future uh in what uh we got going on here for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's good. <laughs> and we have some exciting news for you guys tonight. Um, the most valuable oh. chatter or most valuable commenter will win a 30 minute free turbo session with Dr. Glenn. So you're going to want to share the broadcast with your friends. Yes. Uh, this is an incredible value, you guys. I'm telling you, even 30 minutes could be a major, major shift in your relationship. So Yes. Um, so chat away. Put on yes. uh, the best chat possible. Let's be respectful, of course. Um, also, we're going to have a period of Q&A at the end. So you want to make sure that you have your questions ready and prepared. Start putting them out in the comments. We'll be able to read them and get them ready, and we'll see what this is going to do. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. So go ahead, you guys, and share the, the broadcast wherever you're watching from. Uh, right away, we've got Zena on. Hey, Zena, how's it going? Zena! Good to see you on here. We've got Nick. What's Nick, up, man? Hey, All the way from Sudbury, Ontario. Good to see you on here, man. Um, you guys, as we have been doing, we'll continue to give shout outs, you know, to people as they log on here. Yeah. Um, as we have been doing, I have been choosing a mystery tea for Chelsea every live <laughs> Supernatural Love show. So um, without yes. further ado, yes. baby, try out your uh, yes. mystery tea. Every show I have to guess what tea Ben has chosen for me. And I have not looked at the little taggy thing because it does usually say what it is. But I have to smell it. it smells kind of raspberry. -y. We'll see. It looks a little pink too. Uh, I'm not sure about this one, You're baby. not sure about it, eh? <laughs> Are we ready for the reveal? What kind of tea is this? Hmm. Can you guess? Need, just a minute. Just a minute. Um, so it tastes like dirty water, but... Wow. <laughs> wow. But it's from Stash. Oh, Stash? Stash? <laughs> stash. And it doesn't say on the tag. Oh, it doesn't say no. on the tag. <laughs> so it really okay. is a mystery tea. So this is pomegranate... Raspberry. I did not get that. Yes. Honestly. Yes. But I but I can understand the pomegranate because if you eat a pomegranate, it's very like gushy and pomegranate. That's a word. But <laughs> in a drink, when it's really warm and hot, you can't taste the pomegranate at wow. all. Yeah, dirty water. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. We want to get this show on the road. So we got some friends up in here. Sabrina, how's it going, girl? Carl. Mr. John Bell. Carl, welcome, welcome, welcome. As we said, you guys, share the broadcast. <laughs> Dirty water. Because the most valuable chatter, that means not putting like random emojis, but like most valuable <laughs> questions, because actually our guests can see the questions and comments that you're sending in. So yes. if they are valuable, they will actually pick the winner and let us know and, and uh, it'll be great. So or, um, or we will. I mean, you know. Yeah. So Maybe uh, we both will. <laughs> we don't look like, if we look like aliens tonight... <laughs> We're trying to figure out. I don't know, we, we had homework, right? Yeah, this was our connection homework. <laughs> no, we're just kidding, you guys. Uh, we're having a little bit of difficulty monitoring, but if you can bear with us here, we yes. have an amazing uh, show with you tonight. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, we are going to welcome Dr. Glenn and Phyllis on with us tonight. So 
Howdy, guys. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Hi. We are here. I love your earpiece. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that you didn't tell anyone that it's really about us and that we could sure. not figure you the whole kind. technical thing out yes. and okay. that we kept getting an echo. So thank you, Ben, for yes. making it sound like it was the problem on your end. Yes. Well, you know, love covers. So, you know, that's how we were. I love it. I love it. Oh, and, you know, goodness. Glenn is the tea drinker in our Ooh. relationship, oh. and but he likes just plain Jane, like the black, simple. From Aldi. Yeah. Yes. 99 cents for 100. Yes. That's yes. That's, I do, that's too. Fun. But because yeah. of that, I've taught, like, I've told myself, no, on the show, I have to be adventurous. I have to get out. He, <laughs> he does a mystery tea every show. That's I awesome. I love, that. that's I love cool. that. We yeah. have to try that. Yeah. It's fun. That's, that's awesome. Cool. So that's good. Who are you guys? <laughs> ah, you... <laughs> for everybody that, yeah. for anyone that's never heard about you <laughs> yeah, and what and you what guys you do. actually do, why don't you just give us an introduction of who you are, what you do? <laughs> well, uh, how many minutes do we have? I was going to say, you probably want a turbo of our story. <laughs> well, but I was just going to say we could go to go background it. because uh, what we do now is came, grew out of what where we were. Uh, we've been married 38 years. The first uh, 10, 12 years of our marriage were horrific, painful, disconnect every day. Uh, we started getting some traction, got a little bit of help along the way, but simultaneously all of our friends were divorcing. And so we were intrigued by that. And initially just out of morbid curiosity, we began asking mm -hmm. questions Then it became something of a quest then a mission. And now it's our passion because mm -hmm. we finally figured out a few years ago, we're fast forwarding a long time, uh, what uh, causes people to disconnect. When we figured out what causes people to disconnect, we're able to flip it upside down and say, oh, well, that's what causes people to connect. And we now know that scientifically based on research, uh, based on a tremendous amount of education and experience, we now know how to get people to connect. And that's what we're all about now is helping people do that. Well, I like a little bit more of our backstory. Mm. How about that? Okay. So we met when I was 15. Mm. Glenn was 16. Yes. Uh, we met at a summer camp. I hit her in the head with the softball. Yes. yes. A great way to meet girls. <laughs> yes. It worked. Wait, you she hit never, her in the head uh, with the softball. Yeah. She okay. never wow. recovered. Yeah. It was one of those accidents. He was trying to be cool. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And so it just didn't turn out quite so cool. Mm, but maybe it did. He yeah. got my name. We don't know. And uh yeah. You're a real and you know it, then. if you right. if you've ever been to like summer camp, one day is like a week. Yeah. And so seven days is like seven months. And so yeah. we moved along very quickly in our relationship mm -hmm. and we did long distance for many years mm -hmm. and then uh, married young. I was 19, Glenn was 20. Mm -hmm. We were going to wait for five years at least to have children in Bumiao. Within three months I was pregnant yeah. and we still don't know how. Yeah. Haven't figured that one out yet. And so kind of changed our world pretty quickly and yeah, we had a lot of pain. In the beginning years, we just were, didn't know. We didn't know a lot of things. So we mm -hmm. kind of hurt each other a whole lot in the early days. Didn't know how to really process feelings. We didn't know how to express mm -hmm. feelings. So there was just a lot of yelling and a lot of silent treatment. And um, it was painful. So that was where we started. And we knew there was supposed to be joy in marriage. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't find it. And yeah. so all the pain eventually led us to start talking to others and start mm -hmm. reading. Glenn was the reader, read a lot of books on, mm -hmm. you know, self-help marriage stuff. And so it's kind of like we, I feel like we clawed our mm -hmm. way out of despair. We clawed our way. And I think the fact that we had children young and right away, kind of kept us together. Like, mm -hmm. I think if that hadn't been there, I don't know if we would have survived oh, those early yeah. days. They were so bad. Yeah. And uh, once we just figured out that we could actually get help and do better, mm -hmm. we got pretty excited about sharing that yeah. with other people. And yeah. now we've wow. been married 38 years wow. and have four children and 10 grandchildren. Wow. So, wow. yeah, awesome. yeah. That's such a blessing. It's oh so goodness. cool. Yeah. yeah and they, 
I was gonna say we totally understand about being pregnant, uh, being married and then pregnant. Um, we <laughs> were married and then two months later we're pregnant and ah. we were on the pill, so we wanted a little bit of time to wait. But God had yeah. other plans for us, yeah. and so <laughs> we understand a little bit about that. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't trade it for the world. No, not at all. Our, uh, not our at firstborn all. actually is turning. 12, 12 on Thursday. On Thursday. So wow. um, it's yeah. going to be absolutely awesome. It's been yeah. amazing seeing them grow up. And, and looking back, I mean, we felt like, you know, of course, we weren't ready. Um, mm. But of course, people will say, you know, well, you're, you feel like you're never ready to get married. You're never ready mm. to have kids. You're never mm. ready for this. You're never ready for that. Yeah. And sometimes you're just kind of pushed into um, yeah. those circumstances. And, and yeah. uh, you're right. Uh, mm -hmm having to survive and and even with a mm. good support system i think sometimes people have this misconception that even if that if you have a, you know a christian support system a strong faith based support system that somehow you know you are completely uh, devoid of problems that you're never yeah. going to have any yeah. kind of issues that everything's going to be kind of hunky dory yeah. and you know uh, you have it so much better than everybody else and and the truth is that um, hurt people hurt people and even though there's, um, you know, a great deal of support, there can still be a great deal of hurt. There can be a lot of things we go through mm -hmm. in our life and a lot of things that we bring into marriage, right? Yeah. Um, so I wonder if, if there's just kind of a, I know we're going to dive deep right away. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you guys be active in the comments. Those of you that are watching, be active in the comments because as we... As we discussed before, the most valuable chatter is going to win a turbo session yeah. mm -hmm. with Dr. Glenn Hill. And uh, trust me, Chelsea and I have uh, benefited from that already. And we're benefiting from a relationship with yeah. Dr. Glenn and Phyllis. So um, mm -hmm. be very active in the chat, you guys. I see you guys watching from multiple Facebook pages, from YouTube. Go ahead Yay. and share the broadcast tonight. Yeah. Let us know. You know, of course, where you're watching from. But if you have questions, type them up in the yeah, chat. Yeah, type them up in the chat. And we want to hear from you, yeah, okay? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I'm wondering, um, Dr. Glenn and Phyllis, uh, what that 10-year th thing is. I mean, because I remember, I mean, we're going to be married 13 years in November. Mm -hmm. And I would say maybe the first 5 to 10, it was horrible as well. Mm -hmm. five, 5, mostly 5. Mostly the 5, but, but still, it's... It's like, it's crazy to think. And so like, what, what is it that we, like, cause you guys want to change the world, right? With, mm -hmm. with what you're trying to teach people. And so tell us a little bit about that actually. Yeah. Well, I know that for us, I believe that we didn't go into marriage really knowing mm -hmm. what in the world we were doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, we yeah. were faith-based. We loved God a lot and we were very mm -hmm. active in ministry but no one talked to us about simple things like sex. And yeah. so right away, there was so much hurt and so much yeah. pain. Right. I mean, from our honeymoon on, but then when you come back, everybody has the jokes and everybody has the smiles. And so you don't want to come home from a honeymoon going, that was horrible. Yeah. I'm traumatized. Right. That was why did no one prepare us for that? Yeah. So you don't want to say that. So you go along with what is expected of you. You kind of go along with just saying, oh, it was great. And mm. oh, it was beautiful. And mm. the wedding was beautiful. And and you don't talk about the pain. So right yeah. away, you kind of go into this world of fake. Mm. And the longer you do yeah. the fake, and even at church, people go, how are you? And you go, I'm great. How are yeah. you? Great. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah, I'm fine. And so I think right away we built a a wall that mm. said you can't talk about this. Mm. Nobody really wants to know. Nobody really asks. Nobody even hinted that it was normal for things to be difficult at mm. first. Mm. And so the fact that no one talked mm. about it and no one alluded to it could be hard. We just thought it's us. It's there's something mm. wrong with us. Mm. And mm. and then also it just makes you question like, well, if I was just more spiritual, mm. if I prayed more, if I had more faith, yeah. this wouldn't be happening. And so then again, you don't want to talk to anyone because you think it's just a spiritual issue instead of realizing we really didn't know what we were doing mm. and we did not feel safe anywhere to talk about it. And so I would say it was five years in before we had friendships within yeah. our community mm. where we yeah. felt safe and we could say, 
we're really struggling with this. Mm -hmm. And the first time we had a conversation about it, that one conversation was life changing for us mm -hmm. wow. because we heard you're not broken. This is normal. You just don't know what you're doing. Wow. And that blew our minds like what? Because we didn't fight about everything. We fought mostly about sex, actually, because mm -hmm. we were we were we were on board with parenting. We were on board with uh, spiritual conversations. We were on board with money. Mm -hmm. So we did not we did not con the right. conflict was not about everyday stuff. The conflict was really about sex. And that that hurt right. was pretty damaging mm -hmm. and affected us so much in the early days. Mm -hmm. And it took, you know, it's like five years in, you've done a lot of damage, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of hurt. Yeah. And so then I felt like we spent the next five years figuring out just basic stuff, figuring out how men think, how women think, how men function, how women function. There were so many things that we didn't realize were just like, oh, wow, we're not supposed to be exactly the same. Right. And right. there's nothing right. wrong with my sex drive. It just wasn't like his. It didn't right. look like his. And right. so, yeah, it was just huge how quickly we realized, wow, we just didn't know. We really were clueless. And so the hurt that happened right away, mm -hmm. I would say took another five years for us to have the positive interactions and mm -hmm. the positive, but yeah. then at, at you you know, at 10 years in, yeah. we just were like, we still need tools. I mean, wow. we needed tools to communicate the hurt. Yeah. We needed tools to do that. Yeah. And that was a big part of it for us. We were just clueless. We had never seen a positive marriage a relationship. So we didn't have anything to imitate. Right. We knew a lot of things that we didn't want, but we didn't really know what, what wanted and what that looked like. But we were also clueless as far as tools. And I guess that's important uh, for me as a therapist to say, because uh, couples don't have to go through this. I mean, marriage is definitely an adjustment by definition. You're now living side by side with this individual right. basically 24 <laughs> seven. So there's no doubt that that's an adjustment, but it doesn't have to be this vicious, painful, overwhelming defeat that certainly Phyllis and I experienced. It sounds like maybe the two of you did uh, as well, because I sit with uh, pre-marriage and walk them through, you know, all the way to their wedding and beyond. And again, there are adjustments, there can be challenges, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be this painful nastiness. Right. Uh, but if you don't have the tools, you can't plant the garden, you can't build, you just don't know uh, how to, and we certainly uh, right. didn't. So that's part of our passion about this is, we know, we know we now know the tools. We have what people need mm -hmm. uh, to be able to be successful in the mm -hmm. relationship. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. So just to clarify, you know, we're hearing a lot about sex early in the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And, and so um, <laughs> Dr. Glenn is not just a uh, therapist, but he's also a clinical mm -hmm. sexologist. So he's kind of, he's an anomaly, I, I feel, uh, you know, and, and I think, uh, you know, in the Christian world, we don't often associate, you know, uh, Christians and sexologists, but um, mm -hmm. just, just. Let us know a little bit about, you have a webinar that's coming up. Mm -hmm. In fact, Chelsea yeah. and I have already taken part in yeah. a webinar just like this. And it's all about uh, connection. Why don't you explain a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, well, the webinar is called the Connection Codes uh, webinar. Uh, just again, with our, our story as, uh, as we just began, because none of this started as a business plan. We didn't say, okay, we have a, you know, we're going to sit down, this house going to go. It just morphed and morphed and morphed and develop and then we finally started figuring out and it's really within the last decade that we finally got all of the pieces shouldn't say all of the pieces most of the pieces put together <laughs> so it all made sense mm -hmm. and that's what we now call the connection code we sure. know the coding and we believe we're faith-based we believe that it's god inspired but even if it's evolutionary this is how humans function this right. is how humans are coded to function this is why we call it the connection codes. It's right. all about connection, but it's also our coding. The beauty of that is that this is already inside of you. Uh, if I told you you had to learn fluent Japanese before you could connect in a relationship, well, you could do it. You could eventually learn Japanese. It's going to take a while. It's going to be a pretty daunting test. This is already within you. You're coded yeah. for connection. You are designed. You are hardwired uh, this way. So the connection codes are all about how we make that happen. So 
they're the blueprint of how humans connect in relationship, but they're also a set of tools to mm. facilitate making that uh, happen. And again, we were clueless for so long. Uh, we mm. wanted to connect. That's why we married. Uh, this wasn't a, a forced marriage. It wasn't an arranged marriage. We wanted to. We just didn't know how to do it. I really wanted to be with Phyllis, and I couldn't stand being with her. Mm. I loved being with her, and I hated being with her, and it was very mm. much uh, mutual. Uh, so, and that's part of what kept us together. We certainly had baby young. Maybe that was an ingredient as well. But we wanted to be together. We just didn't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And it really startles me. And that's a huge part of our passion again, because now we get it. Mm -hmm. uh, not because we won the lottery, not because we're smarter than everybody else. We just have the tools now. We know how to do this. And it startles us every day, literally every day, that this is the working definition of marriage. As a faith-based person, the first 10 years of our marriage, I thought, this is a bad joke. Mm -hmm. Whoever came up with this idea had a really warped, sick sense of humor. Of course, we were faith-based, so we believed that God designed this. I'm like, what? Well, what a cruel, I mean, were there just not enough video games back then? When you were oh, married, to, you were just looking for something to entertain you? Uh, you know, so we just didn't get it. Now we get it. We are wow. just blown away that this is real to literally mm -hmm. stay connected every day, all day long. Phyllis and I have had two disconnects this year, the whole year, and it's September the something. Uh, we had three disconnects in 2019. We had four disconnects in 2018. Wow. I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know wow. that was a thing. And if you had said to me 30 years ago that that's the working definition of marriage, I either would have laughed at you or punched a bunch of which mm. because it certainly <laughs> was not what we were living. It was so intense and so painful. And now on the vast, vast other end of the spectrum, uh, it's just, uh, I'm, again, we're, we're out of words, we're beyond superlatives because we don't know what to say anymore. Mm. For the longest time we kept saying, now we're getting it. Uh, okay, okay, now, and you know, every three months we'd say, okay, now we're starting, now it all mm. makes sense. And mm. we finally quit saying that because it felt silly because we spent for so many months and years but again, we're just mesmerized that this is, wow. uh, and believing in a good God, a God of goodness, a God of kindness, a God of love, Come it on. makes sense now. Mm -hmm. And we're able to go, oh, okay, now this is worth uh, designing. This is worth creating. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's what leads to passion in it. We want everybody wow. to live this. Great, great place to be. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it's interesting that, um, you know, it has to do with connection uh, between your spouse because that's all that God wants is a connection with us as well, right? Yeah, and right. so it's a good demonstration as to what it is oh. with the Father between us, right? Yes. So it's yeah. so awesome. But you were talking about, um, so you have the connection code, but but what's a disconnection then? What does that yeah. look like? Because you're saying you numbered them, like you had three well, and then four, and I was like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if I say we numbered them. We just noticed them because they're so okay. rare. They're so oh. unusual. I mean, it's kind of like if you broke a bone, well, you might notice how many bones you broke that year. You know, like, wow, I broke That's six true. bones. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of, you know, a, a big thing. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, we lived in disconnect every day, so we couldn't keep count. Uh, I, every... The disconnects overlapped, you know, so yeah. I don't know if we have 365 disconnects yeah. or if there were just four of them, but they, they overlap. <laughs> you know, they, they were three months long each. So there you go. That's the, the whole year. Um, but just, I mean, you know, you can feel it whenever you don't want to be with your partner mm -hmm. anymore. You don't want to be around them when you're really wanting to get out of the room. You're mm -hmm. getting wanting to get away uh, from him. And there is no uh, mathematical scientific definition of a disconnect. Uh, but we can definitely feel it. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. so intense now. Uh, many years ago, I thought, oh, someday, you know, a disconnect won't be that big of a thing because you'd be like, oh, you know, we're just so close. Uh, now they're actually even worse mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, we experience it so rarely. Again, 30 years ago, if we had a disconnect. Well, big deal. I had three of them yesterday. Right. So I was kind of mm -hmm. used to it. Whereas now they're so incredibly overwhelming. And uh, I just want to strangle myself to death. Um, Does that answer that or is that not specific yes, enough? <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, I don't know that. that we always communicate. You know, I mean, right. some people use the language, we had a fight. Mm. Um, you know, for us, we call it a disconnect because it's not that we agree on everything 100% of the time yeah. or that we don't ever hurt each other anymore. That's not true. Yeah. But we're able to we're able to communicate that. We now have the, the, the verbiage where we can we can talk about that 
And there's an instant understanding of, okay, you know, I'm not trying to defend myself. I'm just trying to hear him right. and understand how I just, what I just said, he heard in a way that yeah. that was hurtful. And so mm -hmm. there's a language that we share now that I don't have to be defensive. I don't have to defend what I just said. I can just understand that did not communicate right. well. And so I think when, you know, the few times that he's talking about where there is a disconnect, it's like where it either escalates so fast. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, maybe I would say, I don't know, a lot of times it's a past trigger, you mm -hmm. know, and that makes it more intense. And then we don't get through it very fast. Mm -hmm. And so then whether it's now an hour, you know, that's the painful, that's a disconnect where back in the yeah. day, we could literally disconnect mm -hmm. for days Wow. weeks where we barely would speak to each other wow. and yeah. you know that's yeah. where we lived where now if we yeah. don't get it said well and quickly and get through it so that we want to again be together like if now minutes feel very long mm. and mm. so to go an hour and to not be mm. able to work it through right. that's really painful yeah we virtually never uh, any and, and we don't even have a lot of tense moments, but any tense moment uh, rarely lasts more than 30 seconds. And again, wow. if you'd said to me 30 years ago that was a thing, I would not have believed you. Yeah, uh, that's right. But but now and and you know in the webinar we cover all this as far as how you do that because now we get to the core so quickly, so automatically because we know how to do that. We have the tools to do it, and so when we get to the core, we're able to. Uh, wrestle through stuff and, and I'm speaking literally I'm not uh, being yeah. hyperbole uh, <laughs> a, a lot of times it's literally 8 to 10 12 seconds uh, the most uh, fast 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 majority of time is 30 seconds. we rarely uh, ever go over 30 seconds in any kind of tension uh, between us wow. it blows my mind I'm, I'm more startled by that than anybody wow wow, wow. so good I mean yeah. just just hearing you guys now too is just it's like it's so refreshing because mm -hmm. you don't get this um vulnerability very much you know especially within marriage like i don't know um a lot of people have decided to do the isolation right they get married and then they isolate themselves think that they've got it all under control and i think mm -hmm. that's kind of like what we did in our first couple of years is oh well, we were the first ones married out of our group. So nobody understood us. Nobody could really relate to us. Yeah. And so yeah. it was just us and the world, right? And yeah. I just, there's probably a lot of people out there who think like that now that mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just them and the world. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if they can just understand that, you know, we are all put on this earth to connect, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to, the, to connect. And, and so when mm -hmm. you have that community, we and even building the community as a married couple, but with the Connection Code community, and that's right. that's been a lot of fun too. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. then you yeah. start yeah. using the same language and you actually understand each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, getting to connect with other Connection Coders, uh, and we're mostly surrounded by Connection Coders now. So it blows my mind just uh, being present mm -hmm. with individuals like that and yeah. how smooth interactions are. And again, we hang out with some really dynamic people. It's not that they're all um, just duds and, and so they're easy to be with. Uh, mm -hmm. We say, And I'm not easy to be with. I'm one of the weirder people. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but people get me and they get that there's just stuff mm -hmm. that happens uh, within me, but I'm able to convey at the core. And so yeah. they get that that's what's happening with him. He's not trying to experience what he's experiencing. He just does. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's all vice versa for me to be able to be present with him. Uh, and and I'm, I guess, more fascinated than ever by human behavior. I actually say that to Phyllis numerous times a week. I go, I'm so fascinated by human behavior, especially my own. Uh, because I realize I'm not trying to experience what I'm experiencing. I just do. Uh, I'm responsible for my next action, my next behavior. Uh, sure. But the things that hit me, the things that affect me, I'm not trying to. I experienced that. And now being able, because Phyllis and I are as different as we've ever been. It's not that we cloned each other and became the same person. Right. We're very, very different. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I realize that what's happening with her is just what's happening with her. That's her yeah. experience. And wow. I can hear it. And I'm really, I'm entertained by it. And I look mm -hmm. at her and go, oh, really? So wait, that that's what happens mm -hmm. yeah. with you there? And she goes, well, yeah. And it's, it's obvious to her. And again, this is all vice versa. And right. she looks at me and she's like, whoa, really? That's 
So that's what happens for you there. Mm-hmm. Wow. I experienced that completely differently wow. than you do. And we're able to honor each other, be present wow. with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and whereas 30 years ago, again, that was so threatening. And I was constantly mm-hmm. trying to convert her to God's way, which coincidentally happened to in my way. Who knew? <laughs> what are the chances? Um, <laughs> and again, I didn't view it that way, but I, I genuinely believe that. That if yeah. she would just do things the right way, which again was mm-hmm. my way, then we would live happily ever after. And now I realize that that's basically trying to get her to not be a human. I'm just trying to get her to be a mannequin or a cyborg and just let me program you. And then you'll do the Mm -hmm. things that I want you to do. Well, that takes, she's no longer a human. She's just a machine or a robot or something. And and again, she's as different from me today as she's ever been, but I actually enjoy it. It really does bring richness, spice, Mm -hmm. love, being that different. Wow, that's that's awesome. I noticed that you're using some very intentional language. I mean, you're mm. you're saying, "Wow, you know, that's just what's happening with me." I understand now. Uh, we learn, you know, a little bit more because she's just going through things, and and that's happening to her. That's real for her. Explain a little bit of why you use the language that you do, because um, I I know that while we were watching the webinar, participating yeah. in the webinar. It was amazing to me how accessible the teaching was oh, and yes, how yes, yes. just a simple change in the way that we talk yeah. um, to each other right. and the way that we um, seek to understand each other, yeah. um, that can that can shift absolutely oh, everything. Yeah, can can you yeah. talk about those, those key words, I would say, that you use? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a big thing for us uh, with the connection codes. Again, as I said a few minutes ago, if if you had to learn Japanese, you could do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably anybody listening to this uh, broadcast is smart enough to learn Japanese. It's just going to be a pretty daunting uh, task, again, to become fluent, not just learn the word sushi. No, no, no. I want you to be <laughs> fluent uh, in Japanese. So our goal uh, was to make this, you use the term accessible, to make it implementable, to make it simple. People don't have to go memorize the periodic table. Uh, I'm not against so many of these, um, you know, personality tests, the Myers Briggs, the Enneagrams, sure. uh, whatever you like, whatever you use the strength finders. They're not wrong or bad, but so many of them you have to go try to figure out the the language and and figure out the the system. Uh, whereas we wanted to play on what's already within you because you are coded for connection. You're designed this way. You're hardwired right. this way. So even phrase the protocols such as what's happening, what we did is observe human behavior, uh, what was already happening. This is about the human condition, about the human experience, not something that either we thought up on our own or drew out of a hat. Say, okay, well, this is the phrase we're gonna pick. No, this is what is already happening, what is at the core, at the base uh, of human uh, behavior, human condition, human uh, experience. And when we get that uh, and people begin just playing into that, well, they already know it. Uh, they just got lost somewhere along uh, the way. So, for example, me referencing what happens, that's a big uh, protocol because if the three of us, the four of us were sitting in a room and somebody walked through the door and they had a big cut on their arm and they were bleeding, mm. all four of us would do some version of, oh, my goodness, what happened? Yeah. You know, yeah. we wouldn't say, hey, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, it's true. The person would say, you moron, how do you think it makes me feel? That, that, that doesn't help them. That would not connect them uh, yeah. with us. So we just uh, implement the very things that humans already do. And that's uh, cross-cultural and cross-language. Wow. Uh, sure. We work with people on five different continents, lots of different uh, cultural backgrounds, uh, language backgrounds. And we all say some version of that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, what happened mm-hmm. uh, there? So we're just inviting the person into themselves, inviting the person into their own experience. And we're just going to be present. Them. So again, it just plays on the human condition, what's already pre-existing. Mm. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I think for so many of us, you know, we are, whether we're married or not, we have been affected by our yeah. upbringing. Yeah. Um, and so for many of us, we are taught things like, uh, you know, don't cry, um, mm. suck it up, um, be brave. You know, phrases that we heard growing up, which it's like with our emotions, they happen to us. We're not asking for them. Mm -hmm. And so 
we, so many of us are stunted in our emotional health because we don't know that, oh, this is, you know, I'm feeling this because it's firing this way in my brain. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we can be very critical of each other, very Mm -hmm. judgmental. And, you know, we put certain behaviors when it comes to emotion, we put them in certain categories. Sometimes we even label them that sin Mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe we don't say it that strongly. That's just unrighteous or, you know, as a believer, you should. And we put Mm. certain judgments on things and people, you know, some of us, like I, I think in my upbringing, um, I, we were missionaries in, in Germany. Um, I'm the youngest of eight kids. I think by the (laughs) time I just learned to uh, like grew up in a very rigid home. Um, Mm. and I learned to toe the line. So I was always a rule follower and Mm. I just, it's like, you know, I didn't, I wasn't all over the board. And Mm. then I met Glenn and part of what I loved about him was his, he was so on fire for the Lord, so knowledgeable of the word, but in all of that, his emotions were all over the place. And Mm. so we came from very different backgrounds, even emotionally and it's like to try to fit all that in a box. Yeah. It didn't work. Uh, yeah. And yeah. and then it was like trying to put each other, like I was trying to put my upbringing uh, judgments on him. Yeah. And he was trying to get me to feel a little bit more, to be a little, and I was so resistant on that. So right. it's like there was so much misunderstanding, but I think that for many of us, we don't understand how affected we've been by our upbringing, how affected right. yeah. we've been by the culture we've yeah. been raised in. And, yeah. you know, even now, I think a lot of us probably with good intention, we put judgment on each other mm. yeah. and, so true. and we have coin phrases, you know, where we kind of come back at people like you need to pray about that. Mm. And that's yeah. kind of our, yeah. our, that's how we label things. And it's like so many of us don't know, it's not that we're against praying about things, but what do we do with all this stuff? Yeah. And That's right. how do we communicate it in a healthy way? And yeah. how do we not just die inside, yeah. but on the outside, we're always smiling and right. you know, people That's think it. we're just the happiest people alive, yeah. but it's, yep. we don't know what to do with all the emotion. We don't know what to do to communicate it in a healthy way, to process it in a healthy way. And so it's like, I think through our own pain, a lot of this developed and and it is to this point where we are in even doing webinars. Um, and that's, of course, how we met Ben and Chelsea, which is so incredible. And they are partnering with us in October yeah. to yeah. present all of these tools yeah. uh, to everyone that can, that will join us in October for yeah. it's four Thursday nights in a row. And. Uh, we are just excited. We're excited to share what we have learned through our journey. And uh, we love the live webinar scenario. So much fun. They are so much fun. We love the questions that come at us. We love the interaction and yeah, so blessed by it all. So just appreciate even this opportunity with you guys to be able to share some more of our story and yeah. To, um, answer y'all's questions. So Yeah, absolutely. I think like it's a lot of times in culture too that we're taught to stuff the emotions mm. down, mm. right? And to to forgive and let go or to forgive and forget. And mm-hmm. and and it's it's really hard sometimes to do that because we're human and we have emotions and where do emotions mm-hmm. come from? Well, God, God made those emotions. So if mm-hmm. he never wanted us to feel them, why do we have them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So yeah. I just think it's so key that, that you're showing um, right. the world through webinars and through many different uh, aspects of how to feel these emotions and that it's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. 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 So well, and again, this is just based on the human condition. If, you know, someone had a 10 month old baby Hmm. and uh, the baby started to cry because whatever, they're hungry, they're tired, you know, they're, they're fearful. It would be really bizarre for someone in the room to say, Hey, Hey, stop it. You you, (laughs) you need to stop crying. That is not what you're supposed to do. Well, the the rest of us in the room would go, wait, what? No, that's what the 10 month old is supposed to do. Hmm. That 10 month old is coded that way. That 10 month old is not thinking through, Hmm, let me figure out what's happening with me here. 
Oh, I have a need, and I, I, I should convey that to someone to get some help. It's coding. It's not cognition. So well, we're just older babies. Uh, yes, we have responsibilities. We're adults, and there are certain things that we learn to do. But my goal is to get Ben to convey to Chelsea what's happening with him, what's authentic, what's real. Mm-hmm. That's when Chelsea figures out how to dance with him because mm-hmm. that's who she likes. She likes the authentic self, the authentic yeah. Ben. Yeah. And when she doesn't know what's happening with him, uh, where he is, she gets lost. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and she doesn't know what to do. Uh, and unfortunately, Chelsea is an intelligent person and she's going to fill in the blanks of what's happening with him. And she'll usually be wrong. All the time. She's going to fill in 15 <laughs> blanks and there's only one. But Ben didn't tell her what was yeah. happening with him. He didn't tell her authentically. So there's no birthday where we go in and rewire people's brains mm. and say, well, your brain is coded this way. It's hardwired this way. But now you're 10. So we're going to rewire everything. And now you function differently. No. Mm. Uh, but that's what we've done. We've, we have never recode people, but we yeah. reprogram them through, you know, people, interactions, circumstances, events, et cetera, et cetera. So people get reprogrammed mm-hmm. to realize, oh, it's not safe for me yes. to be authentic. It's not safe for me to share what's mm-hmm. happening wow. uh, with me. And I didn't trust Phyllis an hour before I met her mm-hmm. because I didn't trust anybody. I didn't feel safe with her when I met her because I didn't feel safe with anybody. Mm-hmm. So I knew, even though I liked her, it, so cute and I was attracted to her, but I didn't know how to be authentic with her. The sad thing is we were 20 years into our relationship before she figured out, oh, he doesn't trust me. Oh, oh he doesn't feel safe with me. No yeah. wonder I never know what's going on with that guy. Uh, wow. She adored me, but she couldn't get close to me. Well, she couldn't get close to me because I wasn't going to let her get close to me because I knew that she would harm me. Uh, and again, this has nothing to do with Phyllis. That's one of the things we say with the connection codes. This has nothing to do with Phyllis, even though it's all about Phyllis. This is about what was happening inside of me. She didn't right. know that. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad she figured it out. <laughs> it took a long time. <laughs> and again, I, I just want to say, it doesn't have to take 20 years. Yeah, uh, literally, uh, relationships don't have to experience that uh, at all whenever they have the tool, whenever they know how. Uh, right. Number one, to be authentic. And number two, to feel safe and convey mm-hmm. uh, with each other. That's that, right. Like we, yeah. we really want people to save the many years of hardship. Yeah. yeah. And, and like if this yeah. speaks to anybody that's watching right now, like this is hitting home right now. Just, you know, take a chance. Just take that leap of faith and try the webinar out because right. like, I mean, you have nothing to lose really yeah. because mm-hmm. it, it just gave us tools yep. to better mm-hmm. the way that we do life. Absolutely. And it's, and it's it bettered many other married couples as well and how they do mm-hmm. life or how any other couples have done life life so mm-hmm. just take a leap of faith yeah, yeah. well and i'll mention that too that's one of the reasons we're so excited about the webinars because we cover in the webinar what i had always historically covered in usually eight to ten sessions mm-hmm. uh in, in private sessions with a couple you know, as far as wow. my private practice well that's a huge difference in the time factor mm-hmm. but also just the cost uh yeah, yeah. it's far more expensive And so the webinar is such an incredible value uh, for people to be able to cover this. And it's thrilling for me because now uh, in this year so far, of course, the the coronavirus is what prompted all the webinars to happen because we couldn't do live events anymore. But I've sat with two couples this year who have not been through a webinar. And uh, it's just stunning to me. So I have to start at ground zero, which is fine. I'm glad to do that. Sure. But it takes us so long. Oh, uh, yeah. So again, we're yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, ten sessions in when they're just getting up to speed. Whereas now people come out of the webinars and then I uh, do private sessions with them and they are rocking and rolling. Mm-hmm. They already have the language. They already have the tools. They already mm-hmm. know how to do this. And we can implement so much more, so much faster. Mm-hmm. And the progress uh, increased. Well, the cool thing, too, about the tools it definitely grew out of our marriage, our yeah. pain, our yeah. hurt. Yeah. But then our married children with their children, so yeah. our grandchildren, they started using these tools with our grandchildren. Yeah. And wow, that yeah. opened up for us a huge realization that, wow, they're little humans, too. Yeah. And they have emotion. They don't know how to express it in a healthy uh, way. They're yeah. instead of yelling at each other. They actually now have tools that where they can communicate at the core. Yeah. And 
Wow. We've had so many testimonies of people yeah. who use this, mm. not just in their marriage, but they use it with their children. Yeah. And that's incredible to us. We love that. And it is, I am, I'm amazed at, I feel like, I mean, it's almost embarrassing to say, but I feel like kids get it better than we do. Yeah. Like they embrace it and they use the language with each other and they like, wow, it just lights them up when they wow. are given that right. those tools. And we were talking to somebody today. We were, we we're wanting to translate these things in other languages. We've been requested for that. And so we were talking to a friend today and let's see, little guy, he's maybe four, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so they were talking about one of the tools that we use, which is uh, what we call the core motion wheel. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about her little guy, he gets it. And we have one that's just emojis so that kids love that. Yeah. And she yeah. said, Oh my goodness, he can talk about this stuff better than I can. And mm. I'm like, Oh, I just love that. You know, because yeah. it's like, yeah, I think kids don't have the inhibitions that we do. They, mm. they don't, they're not stunted yet emotionally. Mm. And so they really embrace the tools mm. and they embrace the language and then yeah. they use it with each other. And mm -hmm. that we love that. And then, you know, of course, it just yeah. keeps going. It's like people say, oh, my word, I, I use it in my company. I yeah. use it in, in, yeah. in my this community. A, yeah. I lose I use it at church and our leadership yeah. team. And you're just like, oh, this is great. It doesn't yeah. just apply, even though for yeah. us it started here. And yeah. our our initial focus was just marriage. And then we've learned yeah. that it's not just for marriage. These yeah. are tools that we all need. Yeah, it yeah. grew out of marriage. Uh, and in fairness, we should say that uh, it began being used in other settings, none of them on our recommendation. It was other people contacting us saying, oh, my word, I use this with my little kids today. And I'm like, what? That's a horrible idea. It's supposed to be about marriage. And people are like, oh, no, no. It was amazing. And again, people are using it in businesses and wow. school settings. Uh, it is just spread. I have to give you a quick example because it just floored us before the coronavirus. Um, we took five of our grandchildren on a road trip, and these were aged, uh, I don't even remember, like five to like that. So pretty good uh, uh, age span. And we're dry, our first uh, jaunt of the trip was from Nashville, Tennessee to Lincoln, Nebraska. It's wow. 12 and a half hours. Now, with wow. our children, back in the day, we had a big conversion van, and we road tripped all over North America. So we know what mm -hmm. road trips are or, and we knew what road trips were like. And, you know, <laughs> so Phyllis and I talked about it going in. We adore our grandkids. We love being with them. Yeah. And we said, you know, okay, we'll probably have to stop every, you know, hour, hour and a half, deal with some issue, you know, uh, get a flamethrower or a, not a flamethrower, yeah, what's that called? A fire extinguisher, <laughs> you know, or something and, and deal with some stuff. So we start driving early in the morning. Uh, the kids are still asleep. We drive from Nashville, Tennessee to Lincoln, Nebraska, 12 and a half hours. Wow. And Phyllis and I are hearing these kids in the back seats doing the connection codes. Wow. We pull up to the, our Airbnb in Lincoln, Nebraska, and we look at each other and we go, what just happened? There are <laughs> literally no issues the entire trip. Wow. 12 and a half hours. Oh, my God. And amazing. we're looking at each other and we're like, that's not a thing. That's not <laughs> possible that we didn't have to deal with anything, literally. And again, I know they're my grandkids and I adore them, but sure. I was for that because I was ready. And, and again, we enjoyed being with them, but I was like, yeah. you know, there's going to be some issues. It was a five day road trip. The, the first day was the longest, 12 and a half hours. It was a five day road trip. We literally did not have to deal with one issue the entire trip. Phyllis wow. and I looked at each other like this. We could change the world. Mm. This this is a completely different experience yeah. than certainly what we grew up with and then what we experienced with our children and we love our kids. But we got with our kids after that trip and we said to them, You guys are you stink. You're a, you're a horrible. <laughs> we, we did not know that road trips could be this peaceful. Wow. Because we're very close with our kids and they're like, right. hey, or whatever. Uh, but it's true. It was a completely different experience because five days of road tripping and we're like, wow, there were no problems. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem the whole trip was because one of our grandsons lost a flip flop in the minivan and he couldn't find it. We never found it. We're like, OK, how could it disappear in the minivan? Right. And we're like, did someone sneak in while we're driving 85 miles an hour on the interstate? <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but he was pretty overwhelmed by that because he couldn't find his other flip flop. Wow. Uh, but that was the only issue uh, the, the whole uh, trip. I mean, uh, we, losing a flip flop is the only issue. You're done good. You're doing yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But literally zero relational. Problems. Well, we we've told you I guys that, that we possible. we do the 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 connection code thing with with our children as well. Try and share it on the screen. Yeah, you want to try and share it. We're gonna, gonna try, try and share, share it. it on the screen with you. We're gonna see if we could do this. If we can't, it will it will be it will be. But we've done that exact thing with our own children. Yeah. And it's just it's incredible. Like they come home after school mm -hmm. and they're just right away. Hey, let's do it. And okay. Oh. <laughs> and they'd yeah. sit there. I mean, we have a five year old and he just gets right in there and he calls yeah. it the circle and it's yeah. the circle game. And that's yeah. just it's it's a lot wow. of um, learning. And so everything inside of me just wants to go. Well, first of all, wants to fix it for them. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm a mama bear. So I don't want to do the ooze. I just want to fix it. <laughs> and so it like, it really trains me to actually have a listening hmm. ear to my own children. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But it, yeah. but it also um, makes me know that, Hey, they've got legit feelings mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. experiencing real stuff, not just kid stuff. You know, we can, we really downplay kids sometimes and, mm -hmm. and we can't like they're heroes and mm -hmm. we need to recognize that they're, they're heroes, even in little bodies, they're heroes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me, it's just, it's such a lifesaver. So yeah. um, I don't know if Ben's able to, are you able to do it? I'm or? trying to do it. He's going to well, try to do it. But yes, please, not, please not talk exactly. about it. <laughs> well, I was going to say, can I give just a, a little bit of fill in as far as yes. where this came from? Yes. Uh, and a lot has changed in the last couple of decades in this field because of brain scanning. We now can read sure. the brain. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, we always say psychology is a soft science. You have to be very careful when we're talking about human behavior because every human is unique. So it's very dangerous to make these, you know, blanket uh, statements. Right. But sure. we do know that every human on the planet uses oxygen. There aren't any exceptions. And if you meet somebody <laughs> that says, I don't do oxygen anymore. I've just, I grew past it. I transcended it. Mm. It's not true. They do oxygen. They do blood. Somebody goes, oh, I don't do blood. You know, I just matured as a human and I don't do blood anymore. It's not true. <laughs> Well, the same is true of emotions, because just as, you know, the, the lungs require oxygen, the heart requires blood, the, the brain requires um, emotions. That's just what happens. There are five areas in the brain associated with emotion that house mm. the emotions. And that's true for every human on the planet. There are no exceptions to that. Somebody says, oh, I'm not emotional. That's not true. No. Oh, I've transcended emotion. I've just matured past it. I'm just spiritual <laughs> now, whatever. It's not true. Uh, you simply have heard, learned to fake it. You've learned to suppress it. You've learned to ignore it, whatever. But the emotions are just as real for every human on the planet. Yeah. Uh, it's true for everybody. So, uh, you know, does somebody inhale and exhale more than another human in a day? Well, yeah, probably. Uh, the average is about 23,000 times a day. So there's probably somebody who only inhaled and exhaled, whatever, 18,000 times a day. And there's probably somebody that inhaled and exhaled 30,000 times a day. But we're all somewhere in that range. There's nobody that inhaled and exhaled zero times today right. they're called a deceased uh, <laughs> the same would be true for emotion if someone's not experiencing emotion that means that they're deceased they're no longer alive their brain is no longer functioning so once right. we get that that these emotions are happening to you right. nobody got up this morning and said hmm, let me think this through what emotions am i going to experience today nobody did that mm -hmm. uh if wherever you're sitting if a light bulb explodes beside you you get hit with fear you're not trying to feel fear you just feel fear so i want you to be able to say that be able to, yeah. to say whoo i just got hit with fear and i want the person with you to be able to hear you and be present with you and not have to try to talk you out of the fear you're not trying to feel fear so what's he going to do tell you to stop it well you didn't start it uh, the light bulb exploded that's what prompted the fear. So the core emotion wheel, there's two areas of the brain that we, we um, separate the emotions that uh, that happen in those to come up with the eight core emotions. Right. Right. Uh, and again, this is uh, the human condition. This is not a uh, philosophy, a theory, a neat idea, uh, something we pulled out of a hat. This is what happens uh, with humans. And when we get that, uh, we understand the commonality of the language. Every human on the planet knows what fear is. Every mm -hmm. human on the planet knows what pain is. Every mm -hmm. human on the planet knows what joy is. We all get this. And because of that, we can connect with each other. Yeah. Uh, and that's a big part of the purpose of emotions is to connect us 
in relationship because humans need other humans. Uh, part of the mm-hmm. webinar, we talked about that humans are the least likely species on the planet to survive independently. We are not geared. We are not wired. We are not set up for survival mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. independently, but we're the most likely species to thrive interdependently. The mm. problem is people don't know how to be interdependent. That's right. And again, whether it's cultural, what exactly happened, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I can certainly mm. discuss that. But uh, for whatever reason, at least in this culture, people really, really struggle mm. being interdependent. And that's what the Connection Codes are all about, is how to help people learn how to be connected deeply. And we're so much better versions of ourselves. We're stronger. We're more powerful uh, as individuals, but also collectively. Mm, they yeah. deeply connected. Uh, we're able to be safe with each other. Right. Are we almost out of time, or how are we doing? We're we're doing yeah, good. We're this doing is good. good. We're gonna have some time for Q and A. I I don't awesome. know if you were able to get that. Um, no, I wasn't able. He was okay. So he wasn't able to get that wheel going, but I'm pretty sure that just means that you have to sign up for the webinar yes. to there you find go. out Absolutely. what that is. <laughs> if you guys look, uh, I have the webinar link on the screen. There we go. Thank you, Sean, for being a good ambassador. Yes. Um, <laughs> It's uh, the the link is right here, you guys. But we have a couple questions for you yes, guys. Yes, we're gonna do the Q and A's. Um, this will be available. So if you guys know someone that would benefit from watching the broadcast, please, please, please go ahead and share the broadcast. Yeah. Tag somebody. Mm-hmm. Put it in a group. Send it to someone that needs this kind of information. You do not want to be um, struggling. Like mm-hmm. we struggle, as we said, like the yeah. better part of, uh, of for sure our first, first five, five years, years. And, if, and some years mm-hmm. afterwards. Um, yeah. Even even though, you know, we started doing devotions, we started praying together. Uh, all of these things are amazing. They're fantastic. Yeah. But there's a lot of things that go down that, that go on in your heart because of your life. Mm-hmm. These there's issues that that float up to the surface and you don't even yeah. You don't actually know where you, where to begin. Sometimes you want right. to talk. You want right. to spend time together. You know, you're playing a game. You know, you're <laughs> you're trying to open up communication. You're trying. You're like, okay, mm-hmm. your turn. You start the conversation. And, and they're like, yeah, and you're just dumbfounded. But if you have a mm-hmm. resource like like the wheel that talks about you know the eight core emotions right. that Dr. Yeah. Glenn is sharing about, um, you guys, I'm telling you, it starts to open up conversation. Oh, yeah. and this is why. Yeah. Normally, we have more kind of funny conversations on this channel. <laughs> yeah, we You've do. seen, you know, we have funny, you know, top tens or uh, marriage myths that yeah. we debunk, all this kind of stuff. This might be a little serious for some of the people that, that are watching us tonight, but we urge you. That is so key. This is so important, yeah. you guys. So please, yeah. the link for the webinar is here. Yes. Um, and it's going to be left in the description. Tag somebody, mm-hmm. you know, uh, put it on someone's wall, you know, send it to a friend. We have a couple questions. And uh, we're going to get to these yeah, questions we're get to right questions, now. Are you guys then okay? We'll have to say goodbye, but let's hit some questions first. <laughs> Can you see the questions for, if we put them up on the screen? Okay. We're going to go uh, here. Can we? I think you're going to have to read them to us. All right. Sure, no problem. It says, mm-hmm. what are the most common pitfalls in communication between spouses? What, what are the most common Pitfalls? Pitfalls, yeah. Uh, yeah, inauthenticity. People not knowing, number one, what's happening with their partner. Actually, that'd be number two. Number one, the, the individual doesn't know what's happening with them at a core level. And because they don't know, they're unable to convey to the other. So in other words, if I say to Phyllis, you know, oh, I'm so upset with you. Well, what does that mean? I mean, she knows it means something, yeah. but she doesn't know what that means. Uh, whereas we get it down to the core emotion. Uh, and if I say to her, I felt really hurt by what said earlier uh, every human on the planet knows what pain is we've all experienced it every human on the planet knows what hurt is uh, emotional hurt and we've all experienced it and so whenever i say that to her she tunes into me she gets it that oh he mm-hmm. felt hurt he wasn't trying to feel hurt he just felt hurt and it doesn't mm-hmm. matter what phyllis's intention was mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we call this resisting the energy or following the energy she can resist my energy and say what i wasn't trying to hurt you Okay, but that doesn't change anything. If you knock the knife off the counter and it landed in my foot and you accidentally knocked it off the counter, well, then it doesn't count. That's right. And I don't feel any pain and I don't bleed because you didn't mean to knock the knife off the counter. So the big gouge in my foot now does not produce pain. Well, that's absurd. Of course, that's not true. Uh, we now know from brain scanning that the brain doesn't distinguish physical pain from emotional pain. So when I feel hurt by Phyllis, it's the same as if I got stabbed. And again, I'm not blaming Phyllis. This has nothing to do with Phyllis, even though it's all about Phyllis. 
this is about what's happening in my brain. And in that moment, I felt hurt uh, by mm -hmm. her. So I have no idea if I'm answering the question or not. The most common, <laughs> sorry. That was very good, though. <laughs> let's, let's try another one here. Let's that was very good, though. Oh, well. <laughs> sorry, you, did whoever asked that question. You funny. just ood. <laughs> How do you prevent becoming complacent in a marriage long term? Hmm. Um, well, I hate to sound too broken record, but uh, authenticity. Humans are so fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, I could not become complacent with Phyllis now <laughs> because I'm so intrigued by her, but mm -hmm. that's because I get to see the authentic self. I get to see the authentic version of her. He lights me up every day. Now, we have not talked really. I mean, Phyllis can't help talk about it some, but we haven't really talked about sexual uh, connection. And that's the second. That's the sequel. That's the follow up uh, connection goes a uh, webinar. But when you get deep emotional connection and then you add dynamic sexual connection, mm. it becomes slightly illegal uh, <laughs> because so I, I couldn't be complacent. We are enthralled every day. But again, mm. that's because we're so deeply connected. Yeah. Uh, we were complacent for years because we didn't know how that, and now we do. So again, what, and that's, that's even before dynamic sexual connection. Mm -hmm. Once you throw in dynamic sexual connection, it's crazy. Uh, and I do want to make that abundantly clear that I'm 58 years old. Uh, Phyllis is 57. Our sexual connection is more dynamic than ever. That blows my mind. Our culture says that's not a thing. Mm -hmm. Our culture says that either one or both of us should have been over this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to get good at it. Uh, so I have no idea what the future holds, but can't wait to uh, get there. Because our culture says, you know, this young couple, they're going to be hot and heavy and horny. And then they're going to dissipate into some level of complacency. Right. And then uh, they're mm -hmm. just going to be committed, I guess, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, we would never do any other relationship like that where we're just committed. That's pretty heavy and burdened and overwhelming. But that's the, what the vast majority of marriages are it's just commitment. I think when you don't feel safe with each other and you can't be authentic, I could see you becoming yeah. complacent yeah. because you're just trying to keep. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to yeah. live in conflict, so you eventually leave conflict and just become complacent. Like yeah. you just accept where you are. You mm. tolerate each other, mm. and to me, that would lead to complacency. Where if you can be authentic, you are not. We are not walking on egg eggshells. You're not being unkind to each other. There's a lot of kindness. It's like mm. Glenn's my favorite person to hang out with. Mm. Like I can't mm. wait. Matter of fact, I, we've already talked about what we're doing after this Facebook Live is over. <laughs> like we're already planning. You know, because we can't wait. It's like it's been a long so awesome. day and it's yeah. been a busy day. And it's wow. like, man, you know, just can't wait. And yeah, so man. it's like we've been together a long time. And yeah. even through all the hardship of the early days, I just can't wait to grow old with him. Mm -hmm. And, wow. you know, there's so I mean, many. We are old. We are old. We, we're there. <laughs> we made it. Really old. I can't wait to grow yeah. really old. Really, with really him. old. Yeah. So. Well, let me just say, are, are, are we limited on what words we're allowed to use on this? Yeah, probably. Because we need to go on to the next question anyway. Well, okay. Oh, okay. We, have a, okay. we have a pretty serious question. Sean is asking, <laughs> Dr. Glenn and Phyllis oh, Hill, no. who are your favorite Canadians? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Be careful now, Sean, because we're <laughs> Canadian too. <laughs> I feel like this might be a little oh. bit of a setup. But, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I do want y'all to know that earlier today, I was on the phone with um, some of our staff and we were talking about planning a trip to Canada so we could be with all of you incredible people. And actually, yeah. you know, we've done so many things through webinars and this kind of thing that I feel like I'm already sitting in your living room, but that's really not yeah. true. So I cannot wait for the time that we can come and be there and actually meet you and hug you and, um, yeah. you know, sit for hours and just talk that will yes. be so incredible yeah. so yes come on that would be we're, we're looking forward to our canada tour That's okay well sure. let me say the thing real quick and i'll make i'll use a good word oh, no. oh, okay. here we go so oh, no. i would I rather i always say i would rather shovel manure with phyllis oh, thank you than do anything else <laughs> with anybody else anytime else 
Hey, now, shoveling manure is not my favorite thing to do, uh, but if I get to do it with her, it's almost like a date. I mean, it's a weird date. It's a little odd, and it smells a bit, but I just love being with her. Literally, I would do anything with her because I enjoy her so much yeah. because we're so deeply connected. Mm -hmm. And again, once you put the sexual component in it, it just gets uh, exponential. But uh, everything I get to do with her, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. uh, to me because mm -hmm. it's just so enthralling, so thrilling because we're so connected. And again, I just want people to know that's a thing. This mm -hmm. is not pie in the sky. This is not um, just BS. This is not mm -hmm. just yeah. made up. Yeah. Uh, it's real. And it's that's again, real. it's not because we won the lottery. It's not yeah. because we got lucky and it's not because we just got lucky and married the right person. Oh my yeah. goodness. Not at all. Mm -hmm. If anything, I guess I don't even believe that philosophy, but if anything, we married the wrong uh, people. Uh, but the reality is we married the wrong way and now we get it. And that's available for every human on the planet. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that, that's very doable. Yeah. Which is awesome. that's good. So I know, uh, I'm sure you've got another question, but I just want to emphasize that I we appreciate you guys and Chelsea so much for the fact that you are partnering with us in October and that you want to change the world. You want to change relationships. And I know that the fact that y'all have been through a webinar four weeks, which is one night a week for four weeks. So it's not, you know, I mean, that's not that many hours, but it was life changing for you guys. And because of that, you are saying, yes, we want to partner with you guys in the next webinar and take yeah. it to our friends, take it to our community. Yeah. You know, that speaks volume to us. I mean, your testimony alone is just incredible. And we love, you know, these opportunities to share our story mm -hmm. and to speak into people's lives and to be transparent. Yes. You know, we don't know who's out there, who's listening, who we're mm -hmm. talking to. Sure. And yeah, I mean, there's no telling who's going to hear it. And maybe yeah. some people will get even offended because right off the bat, we said the word sex. I don't yeah, I know, but it's just like, that's in marriage guys. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone that's married is, is kind of involved in that wants to be involved or in that not. or yeah. not, but they yeah. were at some point or wanted <laughs> yeah. to be. So it's a topic that we just, we want to keep it taboo. And it's yeah. like, why are we doing that to each other? That is yeah. such a painful mm -hmm. part of yeah, so many married people. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that we've learned so much through our own pain and we want for others to not have to go through that. We right. would rather okay. share openly with you guys and, mm -hmm. you know, with the webinar before this started tonight, Glenn had the, um, the wonderful idea that if you sign up tonight for the webinar through this, you know, through, uh, Chelsea and Ben, that uh, you will receive a 30 minute free turbo session with Dr. Hill. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing because obviously the best and most valuable commenter tonight will get that as well. Exactly. But if you exactly. sign up before midnight, mm -hmm. you're going to get that too. So that's wow. a pretty huge gift um, to be able to be a, into his private practice yeah. um, and not have to pay the money um, to be able to sit with him. That's pretty huge. Yeah, and yeah. most people do that, do the turbo session after they've been through the webinar just so that they're up to speed. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing what we can do in one uh, session, just things that disconnect you, things that block you uh, from deep connection. Once you get the foundation of the connection codes, uh, we can implement this stuff uh, very, very quickly and very, very powerfully. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, that a, a turbo session, just so you know, when you schedule, it's usually $125. U.S. So, oh, well, that's right. I'd say U.S. Right. <laughs> $125 U.S. It's a little um, different. So anyway, that which is greater than the cost, which is more than the cost of the webinar. Right. So I right. just encourage you literally yeah. right now, immediately yeah. uh, schedule for this. It will be the most amazing thing that you ever do. Uh, mm -hmm. And it will set you... Uh, I promise you, you've spent $99 on something before that uh, you didn't remember the next week. <laughs> uh, mm, you, you can, true. you know, go out to dinner and spend a lot more than that. Yeah, and you don't yeah. remember the next week. Uh, this webinar will change your life. This will it change will. Uh, what's happening with you literally forever and for generations. Uh, you know, you've heard Chelsea and Ben talk about this affects their children, not yeah. only because it affects their relationship, but God's but it also affects the relationship between the kids and the kids with the parents, any relationship. Yeah. So I encourage you literally right now to mm -hmm. uh, register for the webinar because yeah. mm -hmm. this will rock your world. And again, yeah. I feel somewhat pretentious saying that because I know that, uh, you know, this is Phyllis is my gig, 
but we share this passionately because mm. we know what it has done mm. uh, for us and we've watched it transform people literally around the world mm. and just getting to see that uh, I believe we can change the world I yeah. genuinely literally believe I believe that we can actually stop conflicts and there's not a hundred percent of them people are falling I get it uh, I believe we can stop wars uh, mm. with this not all of them but I think there are literally wars that develop because people don't know how to connect if they knew how to do that, it would not escalate, 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 escalate. And then the next thing you know, yeah, literally the war happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm just lit up about it because I think that we have an opportunity to uh, change the world yeah. so dramatically. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. we're, we're super grateful that yeah. you guys would come on and uh, just let Facebook, let YouTube, let the people in our community, listen, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Uh, some of you are the same people. You would get on to receive a prophetic word. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you. You would get on to receive ministry. Some of you need ministry in your family. Yeah. Some mm -hmm. of you, there's been a lot of disconnection mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you don't even know how to start the conversation. I'm telling you, you need mm -hmm. to register for the webinar yeah. um, because it'll, it'll help to get you guys to talk. It'll help to stir up you know, um, conversation. Yeah. It'll help you connect with your kids. It'll mm -hmm. help you connect with, with other members of your family. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, you need to give this a chance. Um, if you're yeah. here and you're listening, you know, to me or Charles yeah. on the regular, uh, this is something that we've gone through ourselves. This is yeah. something that we endorse. And we're doing the late um, nights now, which yeah. is the other webinar. The, the other, the other portion. So, uh, <laughs> things only get better. Just, just so you know. <laughs> it goes from glory and, to glory. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you'd be amazed at uh, how much freedom there is just even in talking oh, yeah. about sexuality as yeah. a couple and, and being able to have some conversations that you mm -hmm. never thought that you could have yeah. and have a community surrounding you because it's not just going to be you guys taking the webinar by yourself. There's going to be other people yeah. in the Zoom that yeah. you can connect with afterwards and then you can possibly build ongoing relationships. So I just urge you guys yeah. that are watching and you value our ministry the way that God's been using us. Our, our goal is to uh, make God the center of all relationships. So whether yeah. you're married, whether you're single, you know, whether you're finding yourself, um, you know, in a um, wherever you find yourself, you know, you're 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 surrounded by friends, or you feel like you're completely alone. God's mm. always with you, but mm. He doesn't want you to go through life isolated, feeling right. alone, right. feeling right. like you know you're stuck and there's there's no one that you can possibly turn to. I. Mm actually told um i was on the phone with uh phyllis the other day and i was saying that i was spending time with god and i did the mm -hmm. the emotional wheel with god right. and right. I, I and i was like That's god so like uh, today i felt fear right. and you know uh, there was a question on here earlier talking about why do christians you know not talk about this stuff yeah. mm -hmm. i think quite honestly we think that god um is afraid of our emotions but god mm -hmm. is not afraid of our wow. emotions wow. God isn't afraid of our emotions. Listen, he, he went through every single emotion we could possibly think of. Jesus, God, the God-man, he experienced these emotions and, and, and he brought them to his father. He didn't deal with them alone. He didn't push them down. He didn't pretend that they weren't there. He didn't live life in, in cognitive dissonance. He, he, he vocalized, you know, even in his time of prayer, Father, you know, if it be your will, remove this cup from me, you know. And, and the Bible says that, that it's like he was so intense that that's his sweat was like blood. So I'm mm. telling you guys, yeah. emotions are real. We need They're to deal real. with them. Yeah. And yeah. there's a healthy way that we can communicate. So I just really want to thank you, yeah. uh, Dr. Glenn and Phyllis, mm. for your time. So much. Mm. Um, We're going to pop you guys in the backstage. So yeah. if you could just stay for like two minutes and we'll come back and yeah. just, you know, yeah. finish up Absolutely. with you guys. Awesome. Thank you guys for thank this you, opportunity. Everybody. Yeah. All right, you guys. So we'll talk real soon. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a good Man. time. Wasn't that oh, awesome, you guys? Wow. So as we mentioned before, <laughs> so um, we have the link here for the webinar. Uh, it's uh, It's been an amazing time with Dr. Glenn and Phyllis. We're going to yeah. put up this link, you know, again, but it's in the chat, you guys. Uh, go ahead and find it. Again, if you sign up tonight for the oh, webinar. Oh, passed it. Right, um, go down. Yeah. Go down. There. <laughs> oh. oh, there we go. Okay. If you sign up tonight there for the webinar, is. you will be able to get a free turbo session uh, with Dr. Glenn. And if you are yeah. the most active commenter on the, the chat tonight, chatter. you will also receive 
a free, a free turbo, turbo session. session. So we'll be reaching out to somebody here on the broadcast. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Anything else, sweetheart? Go ahead and click that link right there because you're going to want to get to this webinar. It's webinar, webinar, webinar. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to copy the link and paste it in your in your browser. But yes. Just so it's in front of you. You could probably click the link that's in the comments though yeah. on Facebook. But, uh, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, this thank you guys. Fun, good times. We want to do awesome. this again. Thank you so much, everybody. We're going to say good night. I uh, hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you next Supernatural Love live show because yes. this is not the only one we're doing. There will be more. There will be more. <laughs> so this has been Ben and Chelsea at Supernatural Love. Yes. We're saying bye. bye.